Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see the second part of what if Naruto was half werewolf and half dragon. But we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Don't forget Kit you have to see Hiyashi Sama later, Kayubi said. I know Q Chan I didn't forget I just want to see Ukami Sensei before he leaves, Naruto replied as he neared the Inazuka compound. I wouldn't go in there if I was you, Kuromaru called when he saw Naruto trying to go inside. Why uncle, Naruto replied, the noise and the smell for one Sume thought Ukami needed a send off he won't forget for a long time to come go out to the kennels and help Hana all send Ukami out that way when he finishes well that is if he finishes, Kuromaru said with a chuckle as Ukami's name was screamed out from somewhere outside the house and loud moans could be heard Naruto decided that he should listen to Kuromaru and walk towards the kennels with Niramumaru and Hamaru at his side. Niramumaru, a voice yelled before Niramumaru was tackled by a large husky like dog. Blazamaru, Niramumaru yelled back as the two began to wrestle playfully. I see Niramumaru has developed an addiction to sugar as well, Ashimaru said walking lazily towards Naruto, the world is coming to an end I swear the two of them together is gonna kill me. Don't be like that Ashimaru at least they are having fun albeit annoying fun. A third husky like dog said as she walked up behind Ashimaru. Hey Sinjiamaru, Hamaru said bashfully, ah the mutts got a crush, how sickening, Kayubi said while making gagging noises. Aren't dogs related to foxes? Naruto asked which got mumbled replies from Kayubi and a grin from Naruto. So what are you here for Naruto? Ashimaru asked, Kuromaru said to come back here and help Hana with something I was trying to see Ukami but the noises scared me off, Naruto replied with a shiver. I can hear them all the way out here, Ashimaru replied, well come on then I'll take you to Hana. Who are you taking to see me Ashimaru? A girl asked that Naruto presumed to be Hana they just stared at each other for a few minutes not saying a word once their eyes met the dogs finally just stopped and stared at them wondering if anything was wrong with them. It's you. Hannah whispered reveling in his scent finally finding the identity of the boy she saw from the window. It's you, Naruto whispered at almost the exact same time thinking the exact same thing Hannah was he grabbed Hamaru and Niramumaru by the scruff of their necks and vanished in a swirl of leaves. I need to speak with Ukami and but nn no he's too busy fucking sume oh hey kyuketsu should know what to do, Naruto said as he appeared in his room in a swirl of leaves with the two bewildered dogs before grabbing them by the scruff again and disappearing with a flash of red light. At the Banpai compound in hell, Kyuketsu sensei wake up wake up please, Naruto yelled as he jumped onto the bed that Kyuketsu used. What is it Naruto you know I sleep during the day, Kyuketsu replied groggily. Can I talk to you sensei, Naruto asked as his dogs began running around and sniffing everything in sight. Kyuketsu saw the completely serious face that Naruto had and wondered what was wrong, what is it Naruto, he asked. Well I met this girl, at these words Kyuketsu groaned inwardly knowing this would take a while, and I had caught her scent before but never seen her until now but when I saw here I was frozen like when Muramasa uses that jutsu that chains you to stuff I and couldn't speak and I panicked and I'm really confused, Naruto finished. The boy who can take on almost every living thing in heaven and hell is scared of a girl, well I guess we all have our weaknesses, Kyuketsu thought he said, why did you not go to Ukami? He was too busy getting laid, Naruto replied which made Kyuketsu bust out laughing at the thought of his comrade having sex for the first time in over 15 years when he was finally done he asked, Naruto I have never seen you act as such around a woman what is different about this one? I'm not sure sensei, Naruto replied, well describe her for me, Kyuketsu said. Confident yet confined, very beautiful, kind, she smells, safe I can't really describe it sensei it's like her scent is a drug, Naruto replied straining for words. He he I was wondering how long it would take for him to find a mate, Kyuketsu thought, it's you werewolf side coming to a head you see werewolves mate for life and your instincts are trying to make sure you make the right choice but also you are just a normal teenager even if you have never had the chance to act like one and that's your hormones coming into effect but ultimately whether you realize it or not you are scared you're going to get hurt, Kyuketsu finished. Thank you sensei, Naruto said as he grabbed his dogs and disappeared. 
teenagers Kyuketsu said before going back to sleep. Inazuka compound. Ashimaru what are you three chuckling about? Hana asked forcefully as Naruto reappeared in a burst of red light before he ran up to Hana kissed her and disappeared in another burst of red light leaving a very confused Hana who was sprawled out on the ground red as a lobster from her full body blush which made the dogs laugh so hard they blacked out from air loss. Heaven. Gabriel's forge, Gabriel sensei, Naruto screamed. I will save you my aprentice, Gabriel screamed back going into his motherly protector mode. Can I hide out in the forge for a while, Naruto asked in a small voice, and could we talk for a minute? What is it Naruto? Gabriel asked with concern as he sheathed his claymore. Can I talk to you about a girl, Naruto asked as he sat down on the hearthstones of the forge. Oh Kami not again, Gabriel thought, I need to find Hikari. Let me go out on a limb here youngling you found a girl you are entranced with you kissed her and then disappeared because you are afraid to face her, a woman's voice said. Kashina-san what are you doing here, Gabriel yelled in surprise as black vertical lines began to creep down his face and his forehead became black, that's the best description I got sorry, from the surprise which made Naruto fall into the forge because he was laughing so hard which made Gabriel black out from the concern for his student. Naruto get out of the fire I know it's nothing compared to what you're used to but it could still hurt you. Potentially, Kashina said with a motherly tone as she grabbed Naruto by the scruff of his neck and lifted him out of the forge still laughing before putting him on the ground and wiping the foam off of Gabriel's mouth before she kicked him in the balls which woke him up, and to answer Gabriel's question I followed you Naruto to the Inazuka compound because I expected something of this nature you father did the same thing to me when we first met, she finished with a chuckle as her lost mate's memory brought a tear to her eye. Naruto, your mother, is better equipped to handle this I leave you in her care. Gabriel gasped out as he crawled to his bed beside the forge and began to lightly message his balls while he muttered about dragons and violence and the improperness of it all. Gabriel is right son come on I know a place in Konoha we can talk, Kashina said before grabbing Naruto who was still gasping for breath and disappearing in a burst of pinkish light. Konoha, Hokage Monument, Yodime's head, hey mom, I'm tired of using the whole Kasan thing well to be honest I'm just buying lazy, Naruto asked. If dad's pelt was black how come he has blonde hair I just now realized that. Because son he wanted to hide his identity from everyone so he changed his hair color, Kashina said as she began leading Naruto towards the cliff face at the back of his her mate's head, Naruto look at the cliff face and tell me what you see. Oom um, rocks, Naruto replied hoping he had the right answer. Wrong, Kashina replied as she slapped the back of Naruto's head causing him to fall on his face, Look right there, Kashina commanded pointing to a small crack running 10 feet from the top of Minato's head it looked like any of the other 100,000 cracks that he could see in the cliff face before him. What's so different about this crack from all the other ones, Naruto asked voicing his question. This is why, Kashina replied as she smacked Naruto again for not noticing before taking the index finger of her right hand and clawed out her clan seal on the palm of her left hand before slamming her palm 3 feet to the left of the crack around eye level. When she did this a red liquid that seemed to be blood slowly outlining a rectangle with the crack in the middle when the liquid that Naruto confirmed to be blood completed the rectangle the two halves of it swung inward showing a hallway that went back a few feet before darkness ruined any hope of seeing what lay beyond the threshold Kashina strode in confidently the musky dust smell told her that no one had disturbed this place since she and her mate now gone had last been here. Naruto welcome to what your sire and I called our den it was our home away from home and suited our animalistic sides a heck of a lot more than our home here in the village it has a bathroom to your right two bedrooms in front of you and a training room to your left with a library beyond that there is a small kitchenette in the main room here as well as a cast iron stove and various fur piles for seating, Kashina explained as she gestured in the dark. Mom I can't see, Naruto said, remind me what did hatchmate Iskardanas gave you a few weeks ago, Kashina asked. The hunter's sight, Naruto replied slapping his forehead after he said the words realizing his stupidity he felt a rush of air over his head which he grabbed at as he switched on the hunter's sight seeing a raven that gasped out, ba kka, ba kka, before Naruto threw it out the doorway. Just like your father, Kashina muttered, feel free to visit this place at any time you wish you may live here if you wish but I suggest you don't do it forever least this place be found let me show you how to open it first you must dig out either my clan seal or your father's into your left hand then slam your palm into the crack outside and the doors will open they automatically reseal so you do not need to worry about thieves or burglars, 
Now tell me about this girl you saw. Well she was a little taller than me and she is an Inazuka with long brownish black hair a C cup and legs that reach to heaven. Naruto finished his mother raising an eyebrow at her son's description. At least he chose a good looking one, she thought, and she's an Inazuka as well. Naruto there are a few things I need to explain to you about women, Kashina said, first since this village thinks you are the last of your clan which although not completely true does have its roots in truth my clan is flourishing but your father's, well not so much the Urufu cage numbers have dwindled greatly since the time of their enslavement so you will need to take more than one mate which is not uncommon in my clan so I approve second be careful who you choose as your mate. Dragons as well as werewolves mate for life so if you choose a woman who loves you for your name or your money you are screwed and third don't get an STD and if you do I'll laugh my ass off. But what am I going to do about Hannah mom and that you for your concern? Naruto asked with a whine as he lit a fire in the stove giving a little light to the room. So that's her name well first I recommend talking to her brother about her get to know her no doubt Sume will try and throw you two into awkward situations if she is the same person I remember so don't worry about that just be yourself and if she can't accept you as you then don't be with her also check out the library it has some interesting jutsu in it and more dirt on everyone in this village than you can shake a stick at that was one of my pastimes I got dirt on people for you father. What's dad's clan seal? Naruto asked, a wolf missing. A leg howling at a full moon with four stars pointing. Out the compass direction surrounding it, Kashina. Replied drawing the mark into the dirt floor for Naruto to study. There are a few seals around here that your father wouldn't tell me about only you can open them claw his clan seal into your palm like I showed you and slam it into the seals that will open them, Kashina finished. I must leave now youngling my father grows impatient he does not know of your existence yet I will bring him for the chunin exams until then I can only come once a month instead of once a week. Ukami wanted me to give your these because he tied up at the moment, she said taking a package wrapped in deerskin out of her ample cleavage her tone making Naruto think Ukami was literally tied up he knew Ukami was secretly a masochist which Naruto though made him all the deadlier how can you fight someone who enjoys the blows you deal to him. Do you have to store everything between your breasts mom it's scaring me mentally you don't want to fuck up your child's head do you? Naruto asked playfully. As a matter of fact youngling I do. I have seals on the inside of both my breasts to store things in now unwrap that package and follow me, Kashina commanded as she walked into the training room. Naruto unwrapped the package to reveal an object that reminded him of Kami's crossbows but without the strings and a scroll addressed to him he held the objects in bewilderment before walk into the training room he was amazed by its size it was 60 feet by 30 feet with tatami mats for flooring and a bunch of dummies in a corner there was a chin up bar to his right and a climbing rope in the center of the room that led to the 30 foot tall ceiling. Naruto come here, Kashina commanded as she pulled a few dummies out of the corner and into the center of the room, hand me the seawellin. Naruto did as he was told aghast that he had held the very weapon the brother had in his fight against Shinigami. Let me show you how to work it, Kashina said gesturing. To a small button at the bottom of what Naruto assumed. To be the hand grip, when you push the button this. Tray pops out, Kashina pushed the button in a hollow. Cylinder with a slit at the top and at the bottom, it. Fires these discs just like you throw kanai or shurikan. But it is a lot easier, she pulled a bag full of two inch in diameter discs that were both metal and wood out of her cleavage and handed them to Naruto, you insert the discs into the chamber like so, she pushed a metal disc into the slit at the bottom of the cylinder. Then you push the chamber back into the hand grip like so, she pushed the cylinder back into the hand grip before placing her finger on the trigger. Aim at your target using the bump at the end of the barrel place that bump exactly where you want the disc to go when you are ready to fire pull the trigger and whatever you aim it should be dead, Kashina finished before aiming at a training dummy and pulling the trigger causing the disc to plug a hole into the forehead of the dummy and embedding itself into the wall behind it, you try, she commanded. Naruto inserted a disc into the chamber before placing it back into the hand grip and pulling the trigger causing the wooden disc to hit the dummy's crotch and explode. The wooden ones have a small explosive seal on the bottom so be careful how you handle them, Kashina explained, the metal ones just cut though I am sure you will find new ways to use this weapon now one cylinder holds 30 discs and you have 60 well 59 now but here is an extra cylinder I suggest you keep it fully loaded so that when you run out of the first one you slip it in and go. I must leave now my son I am sorry to have to go this soon, Kashina said before disappearing in a burst of white hot fire surprisingly not scorching the ground at all. Look at my new weapon Q-chan. 
Naruto exclaimed excitedly as he began shooting random dummies around him. I would rather see the weapon in your pants, Kayubi thought, but I am happy for him, I think our first lesson in love should start right about now. So Kayubi what do you think, Naruto asked like a kid in a candy shop for the first time. You did great Naruto but I want to show you something now, Kayubi replied. What is it, Naruto asked, you'll have to summon me to find out Kit, Kayubi replied as Naruto began to form the necessary hand signs when Kayubi appeared in front of him she was stark naked which gave Naruto a nosebleed but he was starting to get used to her trying to freak him out he did notice that his pants were getting tighter though. This is how you give a real kiss Naru kun Kayubi. Said with lust as she took Naruto into a hug and kissed him with all she had putting her entire being into the kiss and rubbing his neck and back with her tails which were slowly enveloping them both when she tried to gain entrance to Naruto's mouth he willingly gave it before fighter her tongue with his own she won obviously a few thousand years of practice giving her an obvious edge, getting excited or we, Kayubi asked as she started to grind her hips into his. You tease Q Chan. Naruto managed to gasp out the pleasure he was experiencing had started to make him lose control of himself. I'm good at it ain't I, Kayubi replied before disappearing back into Naruto's mindscape. Naruto growled in frustration at what Kayubi had done before she sent him an image of her sucking her nipples and fingering herself which caused him to black out. I still got it, Kayubi thought as she finished herself off. With Anko and Kurenai, Anko why did you choose training ground 16? Kurenai asked, that's an Anbu training ground. You saw what that kid Naruto did to me he actually landed a blow on me do you have any idea how many people have done that in the last year, Anko replied, I just want to see exactly how skilled these four are as all plus I want to see what Shino can do since no one to date has ever catalogued all the Abarame abilities. If any of them are killed, Kurenai let the threat hang in the air. Don't worry you old prude I won't get wasted before their test. Anko replied before muttering, much, with an evil grin. Back with Naruto, wonder where those seals mom said. Dad left me or, Naruto thought out loud wondering. If Kayubi would ever stop sending him images of her doing unspeakable and extremely sexy things to herself not that he minded but it was getting really distracting and was starting to make him horny, no time like the present, he thought as he began going through what he was starting to call his den he found the first seal behind the training dummies in the training room by accident he threw all the dummies at random across the room and a small opening appeared in the rock wall behind them. When he examined it further he realized it was just big enough to fit a hand through and it had his father's clan seal in it so he clawed the seal out onto his palm and slammed it onto the seal in the wall when he did so a scroll fell from the top of the hole onto his hand when he read it all it said was. Left bedroom third weapon down Naruto wondered what the knot was talking about until he walked into the bedroom and saw a weapons rack on the far wall the third weapon down was a large windmill shuriken that was folded up he saw that the blade was pointing to the bedpost of the king sized bed in the room and upon his examination of said bedpost he realized there was a latch that allowed the post to be pulled like a lever and when he pulled said post the whole back wall slowly slid downwards into a recession in the floor that revealed a new room 10 feet by 10 feet with his father's clan. Seal marked in dried blood covering most of the wall farthest from him he repeated the palm slamming process on the seal and wondered why nothing happened till he turned around and realized that he had no freaking idea where he was till he looked down and saw that he was standing atop a mountain that was so tall it rose above the clouds he wondered why in the world he was there and drew his knives preparing for a fight he turned around and saw a cave opening with smoke coming out of it. His curiosity eventually got the better of him and he slowly mad his way inside after he activated the hunter's sight finding that there was a single male inside, as he was crossing the threshold a male voice called from the cave, I was wondering when you would enter my humble abode. Who are you and what do you want with me, Naruto snarled out. My name is unimportant, the man said as he came into view, Soshi Soshikiba is it really you, a look of complete surprise coming over the man who looked to be in his late 50s or early 60s with brown hair that was beginning to gray he was wearing a cowboy hat a white western cut button down shirt jeans and cowboy boots his most peculiar feature to naruto was that his eyes were different colors one was a deep blood red and the other a perfect blue like the sky on a calm day both sides of his face mirrored his eyes the side with the red eye seemed angry and was frowning and the side with the blue eye seemed happy and jubilant and was smiling how do you know my father 
Naruto demanded his voice getting more animalistic and he drew the sea wellen with his right hand and aiming it at the man. Of course, of course I watched my son die by Shinigami's hands myself there is no way he could have survived, and you carry the sea wellen as well what an interesting young man you are I take it you are Naruto. The man asked, that must mean you are my replacement you are the new mercenary of the gods correct? How do you know of my father and of that title? Naruto commanded again taking a step forward and pressing the sea wellen to the man's head and his knife to his throat. Not that it's any of your business young one, the man said before reversing Naruto's grip so that he was pointing the sea wellen at himself and had his knife at his own throat with the man behind him, but I was the last lapdog of the gods and so Shikiba your father is my son. The old man finished sadly walking back towards the fire and stirring whatever was in the pot hanging above it. You're my my grandfather, Naruto asked bewildered. Now you're catching on young one come draw a seat near the fire and share my modest meal. The old man said Naruto put away his weapons and did as he was asked, you may call me Okiji I have forgotten my own name and took that as my own though I have no idea what it means. The man that had just introduced himself Okiji took two bowls off an alcove behind him and poured the soup like mixture into them both, it's got mountain goat and jasmine leaves in it, it won't kill you. Okiji said as he took a sip showing Naruto it wasn't poisoned. Now how did you find yourself here I have done my best to hide myself from the world and would like to know how you found me. My mother showed me her and my father's den before giving it to me and told me that there were blood seals I could open that my father had left for me the last one I opened teleported me here, Naruto answered honestly. So Kashina is still alive HHMM reminds me of her father she does headstrong and arrogant. Okiji replied somberly taking another sip of his soup, just like my son to put a transport seal here without my knowledge knowing you would find your way here eventually and I know why he did it too. Why did he do it grandfather? Naruto asked, he wanted me to guide you through your tasks as the mercenary of the gods and to show you how to control the berserker gang among other things. Okiji replied barely above a whisper till his voice rose. Damn him he knows why I locked myself away here in the most remote place I could find, but Kami bless his name he wanted to be a good son and show me my grandchild. Why did you lock yourself away here grandad? Naruto asked half wondering if the man standing before him was insane or not from his solitude. Your grandmother was killed before my eyes, it was. My last contract and she wanted to go along as a way. Of celebration. I could never refuse her she knew that. But that bastard killed her, his death brought nothing to me save a fistful of blood and brains when she died I gave up I had no other reason to live so I returned here and buried her here this was our favorite spot you know Kami granted it to us so that we could be alone not even she can see or hear what we do inside this place, we were so happy. Okiji finished somberly not trying to hide the tears in his eyes. What was your last contract grandfather? Naruto asked not seeing this old man but instead an older version of himself he was greatly mystified and slightly scared by the man that could take him by surprise. To kill a family that went by the name Uchiha this was a hundred years ago mind you I killed all of their clan but their leader Madara was too powerful I underestimated him he had found a way to control the nine great spirits and used them against me I finally killed him and subdued a few of the biju but he had already taken my mate's life when he died the spirits left Madara's control over them gone. Okiji replied sadly the memories returning to him. Why am I telling you any of this it doesn't matter now anyway. Kayubi outside now. Naruto commanded no question in his voice as he preformed the hand seals to summon her when she poofed on the other side of the fire Okiji smelled her scent and instantly transformed into a nine foot tall werewolf with claws the size of Naruto's knives and teeth that looked sharper than Hamaru's. You dare come and mock me cursed spirit in my home my last refuge, Okiji growled preparing to leap at her. Grandfather sit down, Naruto commanded. This is the Kayubi no Kitsune and she was sealed inside me after my birth she was the first person to actually care for me so you will sit and the three of us are going to talk, the forcefulness of his voice bewildering Okiji and causing him to sit on his haunches like a dog, now Kyu Chan is what my grandfather says true about the death of his mate. Hi Naru kun save one part, Kayubi replied sadly, we had no control over our actions and after the death of Madara we were flung to the far reaches of earth from whence we came we were going to stay and allow you to do with us as you wished, we knew you were the mercenary of the gods but we had no control we were forced to be tools we could not fight back, we were all punished each in our own way for our actions that day I had my entire clan killed right under my nose the rest each had what they loved taken from them as I and you did, 
I know that does not atone for our actions that day but I give you my word as the greatest of the spirits that it is the truth. A spirit cannot break their word, Okiji thought, too. Do so means instant death for them, she is telling the truth. Yet I do not know if I can bring myself to forgive her. Do I want to? He began to speak. I do not know if I can bring myself to forgive you but I do understand you I will hold judgment for now and will allow you to keep your life for the sake of my grandson. Okiji transformed back into his human form as Kayubi bowed so low her forehead touched the ground before she poofed back into Naruto's mind. You withhold judgment? Naruto asked, it is part of the spirit's way of atoning for their crimes they offer their lives in return for the wrongs they have committed. I must say finding out she was sealed inside you came as quite a shock who did that, Okiji replied. Shinigami, was all Naruto replied after a few minutes of silence Naruto asked, Grandfather would you mind if I returned at a later time, I was in the middle of my first contract when I was teleported here. By all means my boy please and bring your mother next time if you can I understand mustn't keep Kami waiting and all. Your father was right I do miss contact with the outside world and if you need help with anything please don't hesitate to drop by it's not like I have much else to do around here. Do you have any word of Kuromaru, Ukami, Arkibune I have often wondered what happened to my brother and nephews after my leave? Okiji asked. You said no one can hear what is said here not Shinigami not Kami not anyone, Naruto asked. Hi why young one? Okiji asked back, because Kuromaru ran away from hell by staging his death and took Kibune with him Ukami is my sensei and godfather and is now in Shinigami's personal guard, Naruto replied. He he I bet Ukami is still best friends with Kyuketsu too he was one bloodsucker I could stand. Kuromaru was always hollering bout how he was gonna run away guess he finally found the stones for it, Okiji replied with a chuckle. Grandfather. Would you mind terribly if I brought them here? Naruto asked tentatively. You would do that for an old codger like me? Okiji asked thinking about the prospects of seeing his brother and nephews again. Please by all means bring them, he finally replied after much thought. Thanks grandfather I will, Naruto replied before hugging his grandfather and whispering. I always wished for family, before rushing towards the transport seal. In Azuka compound, Kuromaru, Kuromaru come here come here, Naruto screamed as he ran full tilt towards the sleeping werewolf. What is so important that you had to wake me from my nap? Kuromaru asked sleepily. Is Ukami finished with Sume yet? Naruto asked, and do you know where Kibune is? Yes to both now why do you look like you just got three years worth of birthday presents? Kuromaru asked. I'll explain in a minute trust me it will be worth the wait go get Kibune I'll get Ukami meet me on top of the Yodime's head in five minutes. Naruto called before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Kids piqued my interest, Kuromaru thought before trotting off towards Anbu headquarters. Five minutes later, Yodime's head, Naruto what is so important that you had to drag us all up here, Ukami asked. You'll see in a sec just hold on, he replied opening the door into the den and dragging the three of them to the transport seal. Ukami, Kibune grabbed my shoulders and hold on, Naruto commanded as he grabbed Kuromaru's ear and slamming his palm into the seal. Okiji's cave. Okiji. Okiji look whoi brought, Naruto screamed as he ran into the cave and dragged the man out. Brother, Kuromaru gasped in wonder, told you it was worth it, Naruto replied, to get back just claw dad's clan seal into your palm and slam it into the seal I'll leave you guys to catch up shut the doors to my den on your way out. Back in Konoha, Hiyashi's office, wonder when Naruto will stop by, Hiyashi thought to himself as said blonde crashed through his window. Sorry about the window Hiyashi-sama, Naruto said sheepishly. It's okay I didn't want to keep the air conditioning inside anyway thought I would air condition the outdoors too, Hiyashi replied, friggin sixth window I've replaced this week, he screamed in his mind. So what did you want to see me about, Naruto asked. About Hanada, Hiyashi replied. You are familiar of the concept of settling disputes and creating alliances through marriage correct? Yes why, Naruto wondered out loud, because you are now betrothed to Hanada. Hiyashi replied matter of factly, Ukami said it was fine and so did Hikari so guess what you got a future wife, his face suddenly turned evil and caught fire, if you harm my daughter Shinigami himself won't be able to save you. Ha hi Hiyashi sama, Naruto replied, that is all Naruto you may leave now. Hiyashi said completely calm again which creeped Naruto out all the more before he crashed out the other window in Hiyashi's office. 
A A A A G G G G H H H H not another window. Hiyashi screamed losing composure momentarily as Naruto's laughter could be heard miles away. What now Kit? Kayubi asked. I'm not sure actually guess I'll go home and sleep it's getting late. Naruto replied as he headed for his apartment wondering how this whole betrothal thing was going to screw with his life as he was falling asleep with his dogs at his side he suddenly jumped out of bed which startled them. If granddad killed off the Uchiha how is it that their demise was only recorded as 10 years ago? Naruto wondered out loud, Hamaru Niramumaru come on I need to go talk to someone. The dogs grumbled about their nap being disturbed and Niramumaru was going through withdrawals on account of Naruto hiding all the sugar in the building. Where are we going Naruto? Hamaru asked to see my grandfather. Naruto replied as they neared the den. This is my den you guys are welcome here at any time. Just gotta figure out how you guys will be able to get in. Like this, Hamaru said calmly as he pushed aside a small slab of rock revealing a doggy door. How did you? You know what I don't wanna know, Naruto said bewildered as he face palmed, wonder what time it is at Grandad's place it's almost midnight here. At Okiji's cave, Grandfather are you here, Naruto called as he entered the cave he saw Ukami, Kuromaru, Kibune, and Okiji all piled on top of each other in their wolf forms just like a wolf pack. Naruto thought before gently waking Okiji. Did you enjoy seeing your relatives again grandfather? Naruto asked. I did thank you, Okiji replied, now why did you wake me from my sleep? I need to ask you a question about the Uchiha, Naruto replied calmly which made Okiji's strange eyes get very big. What about them young one? Okiji asked. You say you killed them all over a hundred years ago but if that's true how come their demise was only recorded as ten years ago? Naruto asked in confusion. They still live? Okiji asked in surprise. This cannot be I watched them all bleed by mine own hands. There is one who just became a genin like I did, Naruto replied as confused as his grandfather was. What was his name child? Kuromaru asked, Sasuke Uchiha his mother was named Makoto his brother Itachi and his father Fugaku. Naruto replied anticipating them wanting to know the rest of his immediate family. Fugaku, Okiji swore. I should have no, you know him brother, Kuromaru asked. I he was my companion back when I was Merc we were the best of friends until we parted ways over my mate. Okiji replied, he was Madara's son though I had no knowledge of this till long after my days as the Merc. Looks like he revived the clan. Nude exactly brother, Kuromaru cut in, granted he did revive it and it was thriving but his son slaughtered the entire clan save his little brother. At these words Okiji busted out laughing tears came to his eyes as he rolled along the floor waking Kibune and Ukami up, so the blood curse has been reactivated this is priceless. Okiji exclaimed as he wiped the tears from his eyes which seemed to agree for once that this was hilarious. What are you talking about uncle? Kibune asked wiping the sleep from his eyes. The blood curse is a curse placed upon the Uchiha family the only reason I know of it is because Fugaku told me of it in layman's terms the blood curse is like a disease that shows itself in a random firstborn child of the Uchiha house the last holder of this curse was Madara himself what it does is mentally age the baby until the hit about five or six a picture this you have a six year old with the ability to copy jutsu and has the brain capacity. Fighting prowess and maturity level of a 20 year old the real kicker to this as it makes the victim very headstrong and power hungry forcing them to test themselves upon whatever they deem the strongest in most cases such as this the rest of the uchiha clan some of the uchiha have been able to control it but they were few and far between but the ones that could like madara were on the level of a mid-class angel and therefore very dangerous okiji took a pause to laugh and catch his breath before continuing he most likely spared this Sasuke fellow in a last act of remorse hoping to be killed by him later on in life so if that was 10 years ago hhhmmm I'd say he's about 20 or so he sounds just like Madara makes me wonder anyway he probably joined the most elite fighting group he could find in an effort to find a worthy opponent to fight and hopefully kill him the effects of the blood curse won't allow him to kill himself. It does explain some things, Kuromaru said, who placed the curse in the first place. 
From what Fugaku said none other than the nine spirits themselves the Uchiha got cocky and tried to kill them all one by one and took out one I think so one of the spirits thought it would be funny if the legendary Uchiha arrogance was its demise hence the blood curse was created making the Uchiha kill themselves over and over I do wonder though if Fugaku told the new generation of this curse and if he did I bet Itachi is trying to find a way to end it, Okiji finished. That is a pretty funny way of killing a family, Naruto said with a chuckle. It was even funnier when Coyote thought of it we got to watch the Uchiha kill themselves from the inside then build themselves back up and watch the cycle repeat for the last 500 years, Kayubi said as she was laughing her ass off. Somewhere in the elemental nations said Coyote and Uchiha simultaneously sneezed each wondering who was talking about them and in Itachi's case if she was hot. Naruto and this goes for the rest of you if you ever chance upon Itachi don't and I mean do not look him in the eyes at any cost, Okiji commanded. Why, Ukami and Kibun ask simultaneously, he has. A version of the Sharingan the Uchiha bloodline that. Puts you through your worst fears for three days even though it only takes three seconds in the outside world those who possess the blood curse are masters at tampering with the mind and I have the stones to admit I was foolish enough to stare Madara straight in the eyes trust me it's not something you want to go through, Okiji finished visibly shivering from the memories, what is that smell by the way did you bring some sort of dog with you Naruto? Hi in fact two of them, Naruto replied, Hamaru Niramumaru what are y'all standing out in the cold for get in here, he called as the two dogs slowly walked inside the cave their tails between their legs, what are y'all so scared of? Him, Hamaru responded pointing his nose at Okiji, this is his den and we cannot enter without being punished. What are they talking about grandfather, Naruto asked. They are part wolf correct ah I thought I was through. With this when I left civilization they smell my musk and realize that myself and Kuromaru are brothers and that we are the most powerful beings they have ever come in contact with and I have marked this place as my own wolf law states that you cannot trespass without fear of attack they simply do not wish to die have no fear if you are friends with my grandson I shall not harm you, Okiji told the two offering them some leftover stew to show them he wouldn't harm them. Thank you elder, Niramumaru said reverently before taking a few bites and hiding behind Naruto as did Hamaru. Sorry for disturbing you grandfather but I must be off like I said I have a contract and goodbye Ukami sensei hope you can come back soon, Naruto said before walking towards the transport seal with his dogs in tow before going to sleep in the den to tired to go to his apartment. Next day training ground 16. All right you brats it's time for your initiation yesterday was just a trail run today is the real test to see if you pass or fail, Anko said with a sadistic grin. All you must do is find Kurenai and myself, she then disappeared with a poof. Shadow clone shoulda know, Naruto muttered, so where are we supposed to find them at the bottom of the lake, he stared over the training ground seeing only a large lake with a small beach on the east side and a marsh like area to the north, hunter's sight, he muttered his whole field of vision filling with color. That is no damn ordinary lake, Naruto exclaimed as he sniffed the air. Hey Hanada could you use your Byakugan to look at the lake? Sure Naruto kun, Hanada said making Shino and Kiba wonder where the kun came from as Hanada gasped. It's a giant snake isn't it, Naruto asked, h hi, Hanada managed to reply. Great just what I wanted to do this morning walk around in the bowels of a giant snake, Naruto said. Hey Shino could you have some of you bugs look for the mouth I think it's in the marsh area to the north. To find the beginning one must first find the end, Shino said as a means of reply. Of course, Naruto exclaimed, Anko would be closest to the tail because it's the farthest from the mouth come on I know where the tail is, Naruto began to run towards the beach without waiting to see if his team was following or not. As they neared the beach a tree came into view that seemed out of place Akamaru began to bark wildly as they neared it before Hamaru and Niramumaru slashed it in two showing how sharp their claws were and revealing that the tree was actually the tail a testament to the size of the snake. Well we ain't gonna find her waiting up here, Naruto said before jumping down into hole that was the snake. Come on Hanada, Kiba said before grabbing her hand and jumping after Naruto Hanada's screams on how gross this was having no effect. Shino just shook his head before following as soon as he entered the tail, reappeared almost as if it had never been harmed at all. This is not a snake, Kiba said as they looked around the huge cavern before them. So that's why I thought this place was alive, Naruto thought seeing how every inch of rock was covered in some sort of plant, but why would it show red if they are plants? 
Naruto's question was soon answered when the plants jumped off the walls and began screeching and flying towards the young group making Hanada scream in terror at the thousands of bats coming at them. Shit, was all Naruto got out before he pulled out his scythe and began slicing left and right. Shino was using his bugs like giant pikes shooting one out of an arm impaling hundreds of bats with each thrust not even needing to aim for the sheer amount of the creatures. Kiba threw Akamaru a soldier pill and did the four legs technique before spinning like a top and bouncing off the walls the fang over fang making him into a human pinball of sorts as Akamaru mirrored his actions. Hamaru and Niramumaru began to eat the bats two and three at a time happy with having full bellies before they began to start slashing with their claws. And Hanada just curled up in a ball and cried bats turning out to be one of her biggest fears. After a few hours of this with no end in sight Naruto said, fuck this, before screaming, Kazabuki Yobidasu. Hanada caught sight of Naruto after all this time she saw him swinging his arms and with every swing he killed about a thousand of the blasted things but what she didn't know was that he had connected a broadsword of air to both his hands that was a hundred feet long and weighed nothing in a matter of a few more minutes they had finally killed the last of the bats revealing that they were standing on a rug of bats that was 15 feet tall and covered the entire cavern floor that naruto estimated to be 50 feet by a hundred feet i wish to harm our senseis shino said get in line kiba growled are they gone like really gone? Hanada asked with fear right before Hamaru jumped over her head and ate a bat that was about to land on her. They are now, Naruto said, good, I hate bats. Hanada said in reply, can we please find Anko and Kurinai now so we can get out of this place? Shino can you have your bugs check out the cave system while the dogs track their scent? Naruto asked getting a grunt in reply from Shino a horde of bugs flying past his head a testament to Shino's aggravation that he had sent so many. Akamaru has the scent, Kiba called as he ran off following his small dog not waiting for his teammates. Three hours later, damn it, Naruto swore as he saw the mountains of bats come into view, we wound up back here again. To finish a puzzle one must first have all the pieces, Shino said. That gives me an idea, Naruto said, when I say so everyone to the genjutsu release at the exact same time at full power. His teammates wondering what was going on did as he asked and when they released they were standing at the lakeside wondering what was going on naruto was the first to understand he pulled out his twin headed axe he reverently called ageless fury and ran at a tree standing 50 feet to their left before taking a swipe at it cleaving it in two before it disappeared reveal yourself lest you lose a limb or your life it would not be the first time i have killed naruto said in a completely cold voice devoid of emotion as he turned the backswing of the axe into another attack stringing together more and more blows until he began to see blood on the blade enough kurinai's voice yelled as she and anko appeared before naruto he saw that anko was the one he caught with the axe gomen for the blood loss anko sensei i knew of no other way to get you to reveal yourself naruto said you did what you had to and i am glad you were striking to kill or else you would not have found us anko replied how did you find us? Secret, Naruto replied, next time you want to know something don't place me in a genjutsu for half a day. You pass, Kurinai said tiredly the strain from the genjutsu taking its toll on her, your first official assignment will start tomorrow please be at the Hokage Tower at dawn now go get some rest you earned it. A month later, Hokage Tower. I swear sensei if we get one more damn D rank mission I'm gonna kill something I don't know who it will be but I will and if I have to see that damn cat one more time I'm gonna let Hamaru eat her, Naruto said the disgust and rage evident in his voice his teammates feeling much the same. Very well then young one I will see what I can do, Ukami said poofing behind Naruto as he began to walk towards the Hokage's office. Yay Ukami sensei is here, Naruto yelled taking him into a bear hug before allowing him to go to the Hokage's office. Who is that Naruto? Kurinai asked Naruto's enhanced senses picking up a trace of lust in her voice. He is my godfather and my sensei before I came to Konoha. Naruto replied as Ukami came back out of the office Hokage in tow. I have agreed to allow you a C rank mission, Serutobi said smiling at the cheers Anko and the kids gave as Kurinai held her head in her hand shaking it slowly and muttering about being punished for something, on one condition you must take Ukami with you. Done. Anko and Naruto exclaimed simultaneously, what's the mission, Naruto asked. You will be escorting a bridge builder by the name of Tezuna back to his home in Wave Country. 
The Hokage replied as a man in his late forties that smelled strongly of sake walked into the lobby. You're given me a bunch of kids and their teachers as my escorts, the man that Naruto presumed to be Tazuna asked with a sake smelling burp. Let me ask you a question, Ukami said, have you ever been to or heard of the Wolf Isles of the east coast of your home? How do you know about that place, Tazuna asked now totally sober. So you have heard of it good myself and the blonde over there are part of that place's clan the boy with the dog on his head is part of a branch of the clan as well the other four are more than capable of holding their own in a fight. Ukami finished loving the look Tazuna had when he learned of their origin. I apologize for my rudeness most honored one, Tazuna said, well shall we go. Be at the gate in one hour, Anko said before grabbing everyone and disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Damn ninja. The janitor said to no one in particular. Mac and me always sweep these damn leaves they leave all over the place gets damn frustrating after a while. Random rooftop near Konoha Gate. Ukami I want you to explain now, Anko demanded. Well not that it's any of your business but the clan Naruto and I belong to originally lived in wave country I am glad that the locals still remember our greatness it will be good to get a chance to see the old clan grounds, Ukami replied wistfully before simply disappearing. He is going to complicate my life isn't he, Anko asked no one in particular. He sure complicated mine, Kiba cut in, great just mother fucking great, Anko replied before grabbing Kuranai and disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Well I'm ready to go so I'll see you guys at the gate, Naruto told his team before disappearing as well. A few hours later on the road to wave, Ukami was it might I ask as to how you survived to this day the legends say your clan was completely wiped out, Tazuna asked. Two men and two women were on a mission at the time of the raid they came back to find the dead bodies of their families and their home in ruins. Naruto replied, this marked the beginning of the blood feud between our clan and the Habi clan. At the mention of the Habi clan Anko tensed slightly something no one but Naruto and Ukami caught each mentally telling themselves they would ask later. I am happy to know you have been studying you history cub, Ukami said proudly as he put a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Holy shit holy shit holy shit. Anko was screaming in her head. They belong to that clan holy shit. Anko had to calm herself before she lost it, at least now I have the greatest weapon imaginable to fight the snake bastard with. What are you talking about Naruto? Hanada asked. What clan both your parents' clans originated here in Konoha? Naruto looked at Ukami asking with his eyes. Kami help me your mother will have my head for this, Ukami said as he shook his head slowly and gripped the bridge of his nose hoping to ward off the migraine he felt coming. You may as well go ahead and tell them they're bound to find out eventually during the Chunin exams. Tell us what, Kuranai asked. Man this is going to take a while Ukami if you shifted this might go a little smoother, Naruto said as he sat down in the road waiting for the rest to join him, both my father and mother belong to different clans than they told the village. A joint gasp was heard as Ukami shifted to his half wolf form that consisted of a seven and a half foot tall wolf standing on its hind legs his normally red hair had deepened to almost black but glinted red his hard leather armor was straining to hold him. Ah a monster. Hanada screamed as she did a Jukin strike to Ukami's stomach causing him to bend over and hurl. I will forgive you this once Hanada but please do not do that again, Ukami gasped out the anger and surprise in his voice evident. As I was saying, Naruto continued, my father's clan to put it bluntly, are werewolves Ukami is my cousin but more like a father to me. You are like the Inazuka, Shino asked skeptically. No we are true werewolves they are a branch clan of ours and cannot turn without a dog or wolf to help them, Ukami said. So do you guys turn during the full moon and hate silver like all the legends say, Hanada asked suddenly intrigued. Some of the legends are true not all, Anko cut in, the Urufu cage have many secrets they cannot divulge to anyone outside their clan. You know of our clan how? Ukami asked the command in his voice unmistakable as he gripped the pommel of his broadsword so hard it left impressions of his fingers on it. My former sensei was a member of the Habi the last member in fact, he was the one that led the attack on your compound 2000 years ago he sought the power your clan wielded and when he was denied he killed them, Anko said waiting for the blow that never came. She speaks of the Hebijin, Snake Man, Sensei, Naruto spat with venom. Anko you will come with me we need to talk, Ukami demanded as he shifted back to his human form. If your father was a werewolf then what was your mother, Shino asked. A dragon, 
Naruto said simply, Ukami I'm gonna kill you then get Kami to bring you back to life so I can kill you again, Kashina's voice was heard booming throughout the forest they were walking through. And if you will give it a few more seconds and her anger will show you wait spoke to soon she already turned I hop she doesn't kill Ukami. Naruto said shaking his head slowly at his mother's antics. The rest of their team just stared at the huge dragon before them that was roaring in anger their mouths dropped to the ground including Shino's which a fly promptly flew into. Mom calm the fuck down and tell me why you're pissed at Ukami. Naruto screamed as he jumped onto his mother's tail and began running towards her head. Oh hi honey, Kashina said happily changing back to her human form and taking him into a crushing hug. Good to see you too mom. Naruto gasped out before he was released. Now why are you trying to kill Ukami? Oh thanks for reminding me honey, Kashina said before changing back into her dragon form. Ukami I'm gonna kill you. You told the secret now I will kill you. Mom stop and listen for a second. Naruto screamed at her. I swear you act like a three-year-old sometimes. Naruto stopped here to sigh and take a breathe. They were gonna find out eventually anyway. Did you think you could hide it forever? The Chunin exams are in a few months. What are you gonna do then, huh? Well I uh. I hadn't thought that far ahead yet, Kashina said. Kashina Chan, Anko screamed happily before taking her into a huge hug. Snake Lady Anko, Kashina squealed before hugging her back. I take it you know each other, Ukami said happy his life was going to be spared. Why of course Ukami-san? Anko said seeming completely calm at the fact her friend was a dragon. Kashina was the first person I met after the snake bastard abandoned me she was like a sister to me I didn't know Naruto was her son though. Why hide this knowledge from the village? Shino asked interrupting their pseudo guy, Lee Sunset moment. My father pissed off the wrong people, Naruto said simply. Kashina nodded to acknowledge the truth in this statement. Shino and the others decided not to ask any more questions about that subject their reasoning being that if there was someone or something that the fourth was scared of then they should be as well. Okay honey be nice for Ukami-san and the rest of your team, Kashina said switching into full embarrassing mom mode and letting a tear slip out, oh my baby's first mission I'm so happy. Kashina you might want to leave before Naruto passes out from the blood flow going to his face, Ukami said. Fine, Kashina said with a huff before disappearing in a surge or blood red light. Can we please get to wave already? Naruto asked willing the blood in his face to return to its rightful place inside his body. I think that we should train on the way, Anko said with a sadistic glint in her eye as she pulled out a full kanai pouch. I agree, Ukami said taking out a similar kanai pouch. I think I might grow to like you. Anko said enjoying the feeling of meeting another with her sadistic charms while Kurinai just shook her head slowly. Go, Ukami yelled as he and Anko began to throw Kanai at the kids forcing them to run but what the kids didn't see were the two dead bodies impaled with the Kanai from the first volley of Ukami and Anko's training. Glad you saw them Anko, Ukami whispered to her as they chased the kids. No need to scare the children though I bet Naruto would leap at the chance for a fight, Anko replied. He would at that, Ukami said with a chuckle. We need to talk to Tizuna about this mission those were missing Nin. Hi, Anko said in agreement as she called a halt. Care to tell us why Ukami and Anko just killed two missing Nin? Naruto asked Tizuna beating them to the punch. Well, Kurinai asked as Naruto's other teammates were aghast at the fact they had not noticed the two enemies. To tell the truth, Tizuna began. This is not a C rank mission. Our country is so poor our government has no other money we had to call it a C rank mission just to apply for help. What about the riches my clan left the country after its downfall, Ukami cut in. They have been stolen by a power hungry bastard by the name of Gado he has in his employ hundreds of missing nin and samurai he seeks to rule the elemental nations and chose wave as his main base for attack, Tizuna answered as Ukami's key shot through he roof at the degradation of his clan. We must get to wave at once, Ukami commanded grabbing everyone any disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Coast of wave, where are we Ukami sensei, Naruto asked. The coast of wave, Tizuna cut in, how can you transport us here unless you have been here before, Kurinai asked. It is common for the young of my clan to make a pilgrimage to this country and visit the old clan grounds to be fully initiated into the clan, Ukami explained. Which reminds me when this mission is over I need to take Naruto there for a few days you may come if you wish. You will not make it past this coast, 
a deep booming voice said as a huge Zanzibato twirled over the heads of the group impaling itself in a tree not too far off. No one is to attack this man, Naruto commanded, he is mine. You wish to fight me the demon of the mist? Zabuza Momochi on what grounds do you make this claim? Zabuza asked in a haughty tone. Naruto be warned once you initiate what I think you are trying to it cannot be stopped less one of you admits defeat or dies, Ukami warned. I know exactly what I am doing sensei. Naruto replied as a hard edge came to his voice and his hair glinted red and he drew his falcata in his right hand and bloodbath as he called the red axe in his left hand, by the berserker clans and berserker gang I Naruto Urufu Cage hereby claim that the blood rite of the south mountain wall has begun. At these words Zabuza's eyes got very big his bloodlust rising at the thought of fighting another berserker. Izabuza Momochi hereby accept the challenge put forth by Naruto Urufu Cage and reply with the blood rite of the mountain wall of the west. Iukami Urufu Cage hereby claim the right of right master and reserve the right to kill any and all who break the clan laws of the rights aforementioned, Ukami stated taking a place near Naruto and Zabuza. You from Konoha if you interfere in any way I will kill you. Anko had heard tales of the legendary berserker from the snake bastard and knew Ukami would not hesitate to kill them if they broke tradition. What he speaks is truth you break the laws of their clan and we die, Anko said with a note of finality. Begin, Ukami yelled as Zabuza and Naruto rushed at each other. You seek to attack me yet the berserker gang has not chosen you yet, Zabuza said as he took a swing at Naruto with his huge sword which Naruto jumped over. I do this in hopes of finding it and as a test for myself. Naruto replied as he swung his axe at Zabuza's face that Zabuza blocked with the edge of his sword catching the axe where the metal met the wood and wrenched it from Naruto's hand. You know of the blood rites we have engaged boy you wanted one of us to die but there are too few of us for me to let that happen you know what the mountain wall contains? Zabuza called his attacks growing less and less human in their movement and more animalistic the method and reason slowly leaving him as the berserker gang slowly took hold of his system. The west wall contains the lives of those who enter into the blood rites, Naruto said mechanically as his falcata was wrenched from his grasp and he drew his katana. The north wall contains the weapons and non-physical abilities of those who enter the blood rites, Zabuza replied the chant being slowly completed as their attacks became faster and faster until only Ukami was able to follow them and then only barely they would jump in for a few attacks then jump back to examine each other's weakness before repeating the process again and again. The east wall contains the armor and honor of those who enter unto the blood rites, Zabuza said as Naruto's teammates and teachers looked on wondering how the calm joke cracking Naruto they had seen this morning transformed into the attacking monster that was the blonde blur in front of them. The south wall contains the dead of those who enter the blood rites, Naruto and Zabuza screamed simultaneously as Naruto threw away his katana and drew ageless fury as dual screams of RRAAAAAUUUSSSS were heard. Anko, Kurenai, and the rest were wondering what had just happened because Naruto and Zabuza stood ten feet apart with their backs turned to each other not moving and barely breathing what they would have seen if they could have followed the fight was both Naruto and Zabuza realized they were almost even so they did a last ditch final attack one blow to determine the match. The berserker gang truly is a powerful weapon I see that I was hasty in my decision of testing myself against one so skilled I do wonder why you held back, the west wall opens to you. Naruto said admitting defeat and sheathing his weapon before going around and collecting his various other weapons. You wield your blades well young one you know of the mountains but of little else this I can tell from your fighting I wish to test you for I have not met another berserker since the days of my youth I did not wish to kill you, Zabuza said as he replaced his sword to his back. What you say is true I know little of the berserker ways teach me master, Naruto said kneeling before Zabuza's feet presenting his head to him completely vulnerable. In one week's time meet me at the site of the bridge I will deem if you warrant my tutelage then or if I will remain with Gato, Zabuza said before taking two Senbon needles to the neck. Looks like you won't get your rematch kid, a figure in an hunter nin mask said as they appeared to grab Zabuza's body. I have come to claim the body of Zabuza Momochi for the bounty on his head, the hunter then disappeared. What the hell, Naruto screamed, that bastard just stole one of the clan. Naruto calm down there is nothing you can do about it now, Ukami counseled. Hi sensei, Naruto replied the sadness in his voice evident. I see the weapons you carry are not just for show, Anko said with a sadistic gleam, you've been holding out on me little blonde one. 
Oh great hell I can feel hell week approaching fast, Naruto though glumly. Naruto's strong, Hinata thought as she fueled her perverted thoughts and transgressing into stalker mode. We should get to my home soon lest Gato's thugs catch us, Tazuna said with urgency. I know a guy who can get us in under the cover of fog so come on. I believe he is right, Kurinai stated before following the aging man not waiting to see if the others were or not. We better follow her, Ukami stated as he watched her ass as she walked wondering why he did so but at the same time not caring. Wonder what Sume will do if she finds out, Naruto thought deviously, if she was to a-n-o-n-i-m-u-s-l-y find out. At Tizuna's house, phew that was close, Tizuna said with relief. We almost got caught by those samurai back there but we made it so close in fact I think I need some sake to calm my nerves. I have something better than sake. Ukami whispered to Tazuna. Come with me if you wish to partake of it. As the two began to walk out of the room Naruto smelled that heavenly drink Ukami called Moonshine it was very good and couldn't get him drunk for some reason Kayubi said it had something to do with her filtering it out of his bloodstream. All right brats tomorrow your chakra training begins, Anko said with sadistic glee. I can already spin shuriken, Naruto said calmly. Prove it you blonde brat, Anko spat at him as he pulled one of his special shuriken and placed it in his left palm as it began spinning faster and faster before levitating a few inches off his palm and shooting so close to Anko's face she felt the wind from it. Good aim, Kurinai thought to herself in between the perverse thoughts about Ukami she couldn't shove away. Good aim you brat but do it again and I'll work you harder than you thought possible you are exempt for the next few days, Anko said in Naruto's direction before she smelled Dango and began floating towards the scent nose first before bumping into Tsunami, is that Dango I smell? Anko asked in a trance. Hi it is would you like some, Tsunami asked as she offered Anko a tray of Dango that she vacuumed up much the same Naruto does with ramen. You make good Dango. Anko said reverently wondering how a human could make such a heavenly taste. Thank you are you here to help my father, Tsunami asked. Hi we're, Kurinai replied beating Anko to the punch knowing she hated it when that happened, introduce yourselves students my name is Kurinai. I am Naruto, the dog on my left side is Hamaru on my right is Niramumaru. I'm Hanada, I'm Kiba the dog on my head is Akamaru and that's Shino he doesn't talk much. Shino merely grunted in acknowledgement, I'm Anko most holy maker of Dango and the man is Ukami. I am Tsunami and this is my son Inari, Tsunami said as she gestured to the boy that was walking down the stairs. Who are they, Inari asked in a lifeless tone. They are here to help grandfather build the bridge, Tsunami replied. They will most surely fail, Inari replied before sitting at the table and eating. Why that little, Anko began before Naruto cut her off. He believes in actions Anko Sensei he sees a power that has never been defeated and thinks we will fail as well let him disbelieve if he wishes it is his choice to sit here and mope or to take up arms and fight for what he wishes, Naruto finished as he remember when he was about Inari's age and he had to learn the same lesson save Shinigami was not gentle he was trying to kill Naruto. Naruto learned the hard way about fighting for what you believe in and the power of actions. The others stood aghast at this new cold side of Naruto his kind joking nature now replaced with a sad and world weary old man instead of the 14 year old he was. You will fail, Inari said with a sense of finality. Let us tell the outcome when we get to it, Shino said. Fine, Inari replied, he reminds me so much of myself, Naruto thought. May he never have to experience the pain I have. Flashback of awesomeness. Come on you ungrateful whelp I give you everything food shelter clothing and all I ask is that you perform to my specifications but you can't even do that, Shinigami screamed as he chased a two year old Naruto that was crying around hell. You are truly worthless you can't do anything right and never will you hear me I'd kill you if it didn't mean Kami would kill me. No but you do everything short of killing me, Naruto thought, you starve me, you beat me, you cut me until the blood stops flowing. You run me for 14 hours then let me sleep for an hour and expect me to do it all over again, I hate you, I hate you. Naruto's training, continued like this until he hit 10 or so and Shinigami handed him over to Ukami deeming him to worthless for his tutelage if it weren't for Iskardanas and Gabriel he would have become an emotionless tool which is what Shinigami wanted anyway. End flashback of awesomeness. I am going out for a while Hamaru keep your sister out of the sugar while I'm gone, Naruto said before heading for the door. Naru, 
Hinata tried to say before Anko slammed her hand over Hinata's mouth she knew that look in his eye and knew the short list of things that caused it. He just needs time to himself, Anko told herself remembering when she got like that. Thank you Anko sensei. Naruto thought silently as he sent her a look that conveyed his thanks before walking out the door and running as fast as he could with no destination in mind, have you ever done that it can lead to interesting places. He eventually stopped in a pine grove and made a bed of pine needles before laying down and staring at the sky waiting for the sun to go down so he could stargaze. He found a fallen tree limb that he began to carve. With one of his fighting knives he had no picture in mind and was just carving because the even calm sounds calmed him much the same as when he sharpened his blades when he finished hours later he was surprised to see that he had carved himself as a child holding the hands of his mother and father all smiling happily he incinerated the bust with the keke jenke iskardanas gave him before laying on his back and staring at the moon he would never tell anyone but he had always talked to the moon before he had met kayubi luna as he called the moon was his friend and always listened he liked to sleep outside with her shining down on him he would pretend that the moonlight was instead a parent or friend hugging him maybe shinigami was right naruto thought maybe i am useless i've spent the last 14 years training and i couldn't win a simple fight these thoughts and others plagued him as he fell asleep his sadness blinding him to the pair of eyes staring at him from behind a hunter nin mask as the figure recognized the pained looks in his eyes and understanding them the next morning, this is the day when the sun will rise. When my troubles will die and my joy will fly, I will love this day and fight for it so. Until the morrow when my troubles return. Naruto woke to this short song being repeated over and over when he propped himself up on his elbows to find out who was singing he saw a beautiful girl that was picking herbs she smelled oddly familiar but try as he might he couldn't place it. Hello sleepy head I was wondering when you would wake up, the girl said without looking up from her task. Might I ask why you are picking strong herbs for sedation and healing? Naruto asked calmly as the girl stiffened suddenly. You know your plants well, the girl replied as she slowly went back to her task. One of my teachers loved plants and all their uses both medically and decoratively, Naruto responded fondly remembering the long afternoons he spent with Hikari learning about all the different plants that can heal just as easily as kill. So what happened to Zabuza's body after you took it? Naruto asked going on a hunch. Well I transported, the girl said before she realized what she was saying she drew a senbon and jumped away from Naruto. Haha <laughs> I have no quarrel with you though I doubt you're a hunter nin sit down so that we may talk my name is Naruto, Naruto said cheerfully. I am Haku. The girl now known as Haku said, here this herb will bring him back to full strength faster, Naruto said as he pulled a small purple leaf out of his pocket. Steep it in tea with jasmine leaves and elderroot and make him drink it its restorative powers are quite amazing. Thank you Naruto-san. Haku replied before taking the leaf and putting it in the bundle with her other herbs, but why would you wish to help Zabuza-sama isn't he your enemy? He is the only berserker I have ever encountered beside my grandfather and he refuses to teach me the berserker ways, Naruto replied, so it is in my best interest to help him. Is that why you looked so sad last night? Haku asked quietly thinking he couldn't hear her. We all have skeletons we hide away in our closet but that is not one of mine, Naruto said somberly the sadness returning to his eyes. Your childhood must have been rough to exhibit such sadness, Haku responded as a similar look entered her beautiful blue eyes marring their beauty. I. I if you can call what I had a childhood expected to be a weapon a tool no individuality to have to fake everything so that I could preform to the expectations of my trainers I can smell the blood on you I know you had similar experiences though I doubt if they are severe as mine. Naruto began quietly wanting to tell someone what had happened more than anything. You know what keke jenkes are right in my village. They are hated and if you were found to have one you are killed my father killed my mother in front of my eyes and I killed him when he tried to come at me. Haku began wanting to tell someone almost as much as Naruto. I lived for years in the back alleys of my village killing the homeless for their clothes and food until Zabuza Sama found me. He accepted me nay even loved what others hated like a lighthouse beacon to a stranded ship so is he to me. I was taken from my mother at birth by Shinigami. Kami sought to undo the wrongs he committed so they. And another agreed to share me for four months out of the year. At the age of two I was forced to kill a helpless man bound and gagged at my feet. My fear drove me to do it I didn't want to be beaten again to be cut until I blacked out from the blood loss, 
Shinigami is a cruel taskmaster and a heartless one I almost didn't make it and tried to kill myself more times than I can remember but I endured and eventually got out though I am still a slave of Shinigami. Kami I do not mind so much at least Kami is kind. Naruto said not expecting Haku to believe him as he let tears flow from his eyes for the first time since he was five but all Haku did was put an arm around him and cried with him. She is a good match for you kid I'm glad I went ahead and showed your brain how to pleasure a woman to her fullest, Kayubi thought deviously. Ha Haku, Naruto said as his tears began to abate. H hi, she managed to get out through her own tears. I love you, he said before taking her into a fierce kiss that showed all his pain and rage but was tempered by his newfound love for her. Her reply Naruto understood well enough when she shoved her tongue in his mouth and ground her hand against his crotch as they broke apart for air she stopped him by saying, I must go attend to Zabuza-sama. I don't want you to go, Naruto said with a whine as he grabbed her wrist to stop her from leaving. I don't either but if I don't Gato will get suspicious, Haku said as a few tears fell from her eyes she slipped Naruto a quick kiss before disappearing in a swirl of mist. When Naruto realized that the first girl he had ever said I love you to just disappeared he howled out his loneliness and pained his howl sounding exactly like a wolf's lonely cry to the moon which Haku heard as she reappeared in Gato's hideout. I am sorry Naruto, she though silently before going to attend to Zabuza giving him the tea Naruto had suggested. A few days later, I wonder what Naruto is so depressed about, Hinata thought, I've never seen him like this. The blonde in question was sitting at a window seat barely breathing just staring out the window in the exact same position as he was when he got back nothing could rouse him from his trance not even when Ukami and Shino offered to play Go and buy him as much ramen as he could eat Hamaru and Niramumaru had curled up at his feet maintaining a vigil of their master one of them would get up every now and then to give him a lick to make sure he was alive. Okay this has gone on long enough, Anko yelled before she pushed Naruto out the second story window surprised when he didn't even try to catch himself, ah uh, Ukami please go talk to him you know him the best. I think I will, Ukami replied as he jumped out the window and landed next to his student who had gotten up and resumed his earlier pose. So who is she, Ukami asked knowing he had guessed right when Naruto looked at him with sad eyes when he mentioned a girl. Her name was Haku. Naruto said in a voice completely devoid of emotion, she was the hunter nin that took Zabuza she was really Zabuza's student I met her the other night when I went off to be alone and ended up telling her of my upbringing turns out she had similar experiences save they were on the mortal plane I finally found someone who not only I could relate to but that I loved as well and she disappeared. I thought that was your howl I heard the other day, Ukami replied, if she is Zabuza's student won't you meet her again tomorrow when we go to see if he will be your teacher. Hi but I am almost scared to go what happens if she forgot about me or doesn't love me? Naruto asked in a pitiful voice. Naruto let me let you in on a little secret Hanada and Anko in there while they won't say it care for you and love you very much and seeing you like this is killing them as it is doing to me, Ukami began. So if you want to sit here and have a little pity party because a girl be my guest this is your life to fuck with as you choose I was just trying to save you from making the mistakes I did when I was younger. They love me. Naruto thought in surprise, Ukami after I fight Zabuza tomorrow can we go to the clan grounds? Sure Naruto you little jerk, Ukami said playfully as he took him into a shoulder lock and scrubbed his head. Hey Ukami get off you're crushing me, Naruto laughed. Gravity, pushing me down, Ukami gasped out in mock agony as he fell on Naruto, glad to have you back cub. Thanks Ukami sensei. Naruto replied before getting back up and walking into the house and hugging Hanada which caused her to faint from shock. Don't touch me brat, Anko said anticipating what he was going to do and mentally telling herself to kill Ukami for telling Naruto about her feelings. Naruto slapped her ass instead which got a squeak out of her before she turned around and began to chase him through the village throwing kanai and shuriken at him until she ran out then she began to throw random sharp and blunt objects her hands found which included but were not limited to a TV antenna, a stray cat, an old lady, a small orange book, and as many snakes as she could summon while Naruto just laughed, I'm glad he's back though, Anko thought. The next day, Ukami do you have any bear fat, Naruto asked. I always have some how dare you doubt me, Ukami said in mock horror as he handed Naruto a few jars of bear fat. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Anko said as Naruto began to rub liberal amounts into his skin. It is also traditional for a berserker to rub a part of the bear or the wolf somewhere on his body to signify his bond to them. Naruto replied getting ready for his fight slowly dropping all pretenses and emotion and taking on a look of pure rage that was only for show his hair and eyes took on a red tint as he cut off the tip of his right pointer finger and drew fang-like markings on his cheeks not unlike the Inazuka hat. Remember Naruto don't get cocky you've lost many a fight to myself and Kyuketsu because of your hubris don't let it happen again, Ukami cautioned. I enjoy the fight. Naruto began to chant, the fight is mine own through this bloodshed time stops nothing matters save the fight and the blood to lose as death to win as life rouse. What is he doing? Kiba asked quietly, he is working himself up and putting his bloodlust at its peak I've never seen one so young use this technique though, Anko told Kiba her own ritual involved her placing the snake bastard's face on every opponent she saw. You are correct Anko-san, Ukami said, his however is rather odd in its own right just watch you'll understand. I take my blade the deliverer of life or death and cause mine own blood to flow, Naruto chanted as he sliced the artery in his wrist and clamping his mouth down over it drinking all the blood he could before Kyubi's chakra closed the wound, I drink my blood in semblance of the battle to come so that mine own pain will not disturb me rouse, let us leave Tsunami I leave with you Hamaru and Niramumaru they will protect you and your son until we return. Naruto said as he turned from the glass he was using as a mirror revealing his eyes which were now blood red with a single diamond outlined in white to tell where he was looking. To battle, Ukami whispered before they all disappeared in a swirl of leaves. At the bridge, took your sweat time young one, Zabuza said, I was half tempted to start killing off these workers to relieve my boredom. We have a match to attend to, Naruto said in his emotionless voice it was then that Zabuza and Haku caught his gaze which made Haku flinch in fear but Zabuza merely nodded in approval. I Naruto Urufu Cage hereby enact the blood rite of the mountain peaks by the berserker gang and the berserker clans, Naruto said. I Zabuza Momochi hereby accept the challenge set forth by Naruto Urufu Cage and appoint my comrade Haku and Naruto Urufu Cage, comrade Ukami to be the right masters to ensure that no one will interfere, Zabuza replied throwing away his weapon and then settling down in his taijutsu stance. Begin, Haku and Ukami yelled at the same time as. Soon as the words had left their mouths Naruto and. Zabuza ran at each other like a bullet out of a gun. Trading blow for blow neither party giving ground nor gaining any Naruto threw a hook at Zabuza's head which he countered with a hook of his own Zabuza kicked at Naruto's stomach and Naruto drew his knee up to block it it got to the point where Naruto and Zabuza had their fists pressed up against each other knowing the first one to give way would be the loser they were standing on one leg in an impressive feat of balance with Zabuza's left leg against Naruto's right knee. The climb to the mountain peak is hard, Naruto began. As he jumped away, it is long and arduous, he chanted. As he ran in for a punch before leaping over Zabuza. To kick his spine, much blood is spilled during the climb even death must be faced, Zabuza landed a kick to Naruto's right elbow crushing it and leaving that arm incapable of movement, but eventually if the peak is reached power unimaginable is attained. As Naruto finished the chant time seemed to stop and Naruto could see that a horde of samurai were on the other side of the bridge surrounding a short grey-haired old man he realized that Haku was mid-air throwing Senban at them with Anko right beside her. Kiba and Akamaru were performing the fang over fang but like the others were stopped mid-air, Shino had draw all of his bugs around him effectively making a suit of armor of sorts but where hands should have been axe and lance shaped protrusions appeared. Ukami was standing back to back with Kurinai surrounded by samurai his sword drawn and his mouth open for a battle cry and as fast as it happened it was over but as that instant of time stop ended Naruto felt a rush of power like he had a miniature son inside him he jumped over Zabuza and kicked him in the back of the head with enough force to kick through concrete as Zabuza fell to the ground unconscious Naruto drew his Falcata and Ageless Fury wielding the huge great axe one-handed like it weighed no more than his fighting knife he instantly charged the horde of people cutting down four and five per swing as he steadily made his way closer and closer to the old man his mind screaming for blood his vision was a blur of sword swings and blood until he woke up in a large room reminiscent of the Konoha Council Hall there were maybe twenty people here compared to the nearly hundred in the Konoha Council. Where where am I? Naruto asked weakly, quiet young one and listen pretend you are still asleep. 
Zabuza commanded Naruto was too tired to argue and pretended to be asleep. Why have we been called here? A man with long white hair that made Naruto think he had a mane asked. To initiate another into our ranks brothers, Ukami said which brought a hush over those gathered there none so much so then the three on the raised dais on the right wall they were facing the rest of the crowd with Naruto, Ukami, and Zabuza standing in the center of the room. On what grounds do you claim he can join us with leaps and bounds? The man on the dais next to white hair asked this one had a lot of swords strapped to his back and looked like he had black skin. He is the mercenary of the gods he has just now unlocked the berserker gang. He is the son of Soshikiba, Ukami stated. He has defeated me in battle granted he took me by surprise when he unlocked the berserker gang but he defeated me in a fair berserker blood rite, Zabuza added. What makes you think we will accept him, a woman's voice asked from the crowd. Brothers calm yourselves if you please look to your right and look to your left I remember a time when every seat in this room was filled and we had people standing on top of that now look at us a mere 25 of today I say the fact he is Soshikiba's son is enough, another voice called from the crowd. He is worthy allow him entrance. Another called until all present were divided and screaming at each other until the last person on the dais screamed, silence. Naruto could not make out what he looked like because he was shrouded in darkness. Brothers ask yourselves and remember how each and every one of you gained entrance to this place, White Hair said. We were called we did not have a choice I myself blacked out and was brought here by a means I still don't understand much the same as this boy and much the same as many of you. Let the child speak for himself let him not be meek I want him to act like a freak, the black man said. I let the boy have a say, a voice he thought was his grandfather's yelled from the crowd. Get up young one. Zabuza commanded as Naruto shakily got to his feet. State your name, white hair commanded. I am Naruto Urufu Cage son of Soshikiba Urufu Cage and Kashina Ryujin, Naruto called back at the men. Does not his lineage prove worthy enough for his entrance, the man in shadow asked, the mere fact that he can stand so soon after activating the berserker gang proves his strength of body and mind. Let him be tested. Someone from the crowd screamed this was met with a roar of approval. So be it, white hair said as these words were uttered Naruto drew ageless fury and the crowd was hushed. How did you come to obtain that blade, the shadow man asked. It was given to me by Ukami sensei and has been passed down from the original berserker that my clan found this was his axe and I will fight you all with it if need be I know not what this test is but I am getting a migraine and just want to lie down so either decide something or fight, Naruto replied. I believe the test is unneeded, brothers do you agree, the shadow man asked. If the axe of Asgard has chosen him then he is worthy of our ranks, a voice that sounded like Kuromaru yelled from the crowd. Are all here in favor of this boy joining our ranks, white hair asked. All present agreed save one who said, once the matter of the test comes up then the test must be brought such as our law. Sadly enough he is right young one prepare to fight, the black man said. Naruto drain all the chakra you placed into your shuriken and kanai to weaken the effects of the berserker gang then draw Donfang, Ukami whispered, Kyuketsu has given his approval for the use of it so do it if you wish to live. Naruto obeyed his command and drained the chakra he had stored in his weapons and was about to reach into his seal for Donfang when an exact copy of Naruto made out of shadow appeared ten feet in front of him. This is your test, the shadow man said, defeat yourself. Ukami Zabuza take your seats this is his fight. May Heimdall's wrath fill you young one, Zabuza said to Naruto before taking his seat. Begin, all in the room yelled as one Naruto reached into his arm and pulled out Donfang enjoying the collective gasp most in the room gave when they saw the weapon he was taken aback when his copy reached into its arm and pulled out an exact copy of Donfang. So it not only looks like me it has all my weapons and probably all my jutsu and knowledge as well, Naruto thought, this will be a tough fight. Allow me to help Kit, Kayubi said before piercing one of the walls in his head with her claws as she did so Naruto was enveloped in a crimson light that manifested itself as nine blood red tails flowing behind him. Heimdall's wrath, Naruto screamed before teleporting behind his clone and taking its head off with Donfang then impaling it with all nine tails and ripping it to shreds and to finish the attack Donfang's blade began to bubble as if made of molten lava Naruto held his sword arm straight out and spun in a circle causing a sphere of white hot fire to surround him incinerating his clone. Is his performance satisfactory? the man of shadow asked. All present just nodded dumbfoundly at this display of power. 
Welcome to the kinsman Naruto Urufu Cage and you Kayubi no Kitsune as well though you are a part of Naruto I still grant you a place among us, white hair said as the tails surrounded Naruto and slowly closed in around him sinking into his body slowly. Take this scroll it will show you all you need to know, the man of shadow said before throwing a black scroll at Naruto's feet. Thank you, Naruto managed to gasp out before he fell unconscious to the floor. Mindscape, Q Kayubi, Naruto asked groggily. Kit come here, Kayubi said weakly. What's wrong Q chan Naruto asked genuinely. I am dying Naru kun Kayubi replied somberly taking Naruto into her arms. SSHSSHHHH don't cry come here it's okay. Why are you dying Q Haim? Naruto asked through his tears. I have been dying since the moment I was sealed inside you Naru kun Kayubi replied gently stroking his hair. I have just given you all my power and my jutsu my death will be felt by the other spirits and will seek out the place of my death you must not leave the place of my death until they all are there they will show you how to use your powers I have shown you the location of my old den outside of Konoha you must go there when I die. You can't die Q Haim, Naruto said hugging her tighter. I don't want to Naru kun but I can't stop it any more than you can stop the sun from setting each night, Kayubi replied as she began to cry too. How long? Naruto asked simply, a little over a week, Kayubi said sadly, I will grow weaker and weaker each day you must make it to my den by the end of the week. If I summon you will you be okay? Naruto asked, I think so, Kayubi replied. Good, Naruto said before forcing himself out of his mindscape. Tsunami's house, Naruto you must wake up now, Haku said gently poking his arm. That's not how you wake someone up this is how you wake someone up, Anko exclaimed before pulling out a kanai and cutting Naruto's palm. A a a a g g g g h h h h, Naruto screamed as he jumped out of his bed to see his entire team plus Haku and Zabuza standing around the room. Uh how long have I been out for, Naruto asked. Four days, Zabuza replied which made Naruto's eyes get really big. I only have three left with Kyuhaim, Naruto thought sadly. Ukami Zabuza I need to talk to you now. I'll meet you outside, Ukami said knowing the look in Naruto's eyes before he walked out with Zabuza in tow. Outside, beach, what do you want to talk about Naruto, Ukami asked. Kyuhaim is dying, Naruto replied sadly as his depressive look came over him again like it had when Haku left. Who, Zabuza asked in confusion, Kayubi no Kitsune is sealed inside him, Ukami replied flatly which surprised Zabuza, how can she die? She said it had something to do with the seal she said she had a week left and that was in the kinsman hall four days ago I must go to her den before her death, Naruto told the both of them, Ukami I am sorry to say but our journey to the clan grounds must wait as must my berserker training Zabuza I need the two of you to stall the team until after her death I may be gone for a week or two but I will be back. How can we be sure of this, Zabuza asked skeptically. You have my word as a berserker, Naruto replied, I need to leave now and I need you two to look after Hamaru and Niramumaru when I'm gone. I understand Naruto I know how much this means to you go and take as much time as you need, Ukami told Naruto. Thank you sensei more than you will ever know I thank you, Naruto replied before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Konoha, forest of death, it is just over the next hill, Kayubi told him weakly. SSSHHH don't talk Kyuhaim just rest, Naruto said to the woman in his arms who just snuggled against his chest. Cut my hand with one of your kanai and place it on. That rock, Kayubi commanded Naruto did as he was asked and was surprised to find a hole open up in the ground he walked into it finding himself in a tunnel a hundred feet in diameter that sloped gently downwards for two hundred feet before stopping in a large cavern that Naruto couldn't even estimate the size of he saw a throne on the far side of the room with a threadbare carpet leading to it, place me on the throne, Kayubi commanded which Naruto did when he finally got to it. I am glad to have met you Kit and I am proud to call you friend. Kayubi told him her beauty and life Naruto could see visibly draining from her. Sleep Kyuhaim sleep you need your rest, Naruto told the still form in front of him. Naru kun, Kayubi said weakly, hi Kyuhaim do you need anything, Naruto asked. I I love you, more than anything else in the world I love you, Kayubi said the sincerity in her voice bringing tears to Naruto's eyes. I love you too Kyuhaim. Naruto replied as her drew her into his embrace he sat down on the throne and placed her in his lap which she snuggled into and fell asleep, 
I love you so much, Naruto said before gently kissing her lips the love and sincerity in his kiss evident. Three days later, she hasn't moved in three days and she has a fever. Naruto thought frantically. She really is going to die isn't she? As Naruto was thinking these thoughts he saw his Kyuhime's chest rise and fall for the last time as she uttered her last breath and died in his arms. Kyuhime. Naruto howled out in completed sadness as he began to cry over her dead form hoping somehow for his tears and kisses he was laying upon her would return her to him as he was doing this he didn't notice the eight forms that had appeared in the throne room until one of them gave a slight cough. Who are you? Naruto asked the rage in his voice enough to kill as he drew Duskfang and Bloodbath his tears running down his face, leave us be I will die to protect her. She is dead you fool move before you two join her, a boy with red hair and a gourd on his back said before trying to get around Naruto he almost had his body cleaved in two by Naruto's sword. You touch her and you will be the one joining her, Naruto said as he felt the berserker gang beginning to take hold. Stand down young kit least we strike you down next to your beloved we mean you no harm, a girl that smelled of cats said in a calm voice, lay down your weapons and let us talk. Something in her voice made Naruto believe her he cut his finger with Duskfang before returning it and Bloodbath to their respective seals. Why will you not leave me to mourn? Naruto asked somberly not trying to hide his tears. We are here to do the same this is no game, the black man from the kinsman hall said Naruto recognized him and believed him. You are the other spirits, Naruto asked skeptically. We are their jailers just as you were the holder of Kayubi so are we the holders of the other eight, the red-haired boy said. I am Gara holder of the one-tailed Tanuki. I am Yugito holder of the two-tailed cat. I am Yugura holder of the three-tailed turtle. I am Roshi holder of the four-tailed coyote. I am Han holder of the five-tailed bear. I am Yutakata holder of the six-tailed wolf. I am Fu holder of the seven-tailed phoenix. And I am Killer Bee holder of the eight-tailed giant ox you fox. A. N. While I used the Jinchuriki from the manga I didn't use all the tailed beasts here as a link if you want to know what they look like wiki, Jinch% C5% Abriki their fighting styles are the same but they have different beasts sealed in them save for Gara, Yugito, Yugura, Naruto, and Killer B. Q Haim is dead as you can see she gave me her powers before her death so basically I am the new nine tailed spirit please just leave me be, Naruto said sadly before turning back to Kyubi's body. We cannot do that young pup, an otherworldly voce said. And why not, Naruto asked, just leave me be to myself. We cannot do that cub, a different voice screamed at his back. Is my wish to be alone such a difficult thing to ask, Naruto shot back as he turned around to see not only the eight people standing there but eight animals Naruto knew to be the spirits standing being their respective jailers. We realize what she meant to you but what you must realize is that she gave you her powers that makes you the new nine-tailed spirit so you must be trained on how to use your powers otherwise you will destroy half this nation with the flick of a wrist and not mean to do it, the wolf standing behind you Takata said to him. And the mere fact that you are a berserker will multiply your power by a factor of ten so you must be taught to use your powers, you do not have a choice in this matter, the bear said. You may be the nine-tailed spirit and a berserker but myself and Rokubi are the parents of the berserkers it was we who gave you humans the berserker gang together the eight of us can keep you here if we need to. I understand honored ones and I will accept your training it was Kyuheim's last wish that I take her place and be taught by the other spirits, please just give me a few days to mourn and give her a suitable burial, Naruto asked. We can give you a day and a half before your powers become out of control, the coyote said. Thank you. Naruto replied as the eight spirits disappeared. I miss you so much Kyuheim, Naruto told her still form before taking it into his arms and crying while he rocked gently. I wish I could still talk to you, and kiss you, and hug you again, Naruto thought as he kisses her unresponsive lips that were already cooling. You were always there, you were my first friend you were the first person that cared for me just for me I wish I could bring you back. As her body became stiff in his arms a wind filled the room creating a miniature tornado in the center of it Naruto set her body down and drew the seawellen and duskfang ready to lay down his life to protect her he was surprised when the tornado stopped suddenly and a sleeping fox lay in the center of it he turned his head around to get a look at Kyubi before investigating the fox only to find her body gone he looked back at the fox. It couldn't be, could it, 
Naruto asked himself dumbfounded before slashing his arm with Duskfang and placing it back in its seal along with the Seawellen and walking towards the fox about halfway to it he caught its scent and the instant he did he teleported next to the fox and took it into a soft embrace as he whispered, Kuheim, in its ear he laid down on the floor as the fox curled up on his stomach and snuggled into it. I love you, Naruto whispered before scratching the fox's ears lightly. I love you too, the fox replied before licking his face. It is you, Naruto exclaimed as he took the fox into a crushing hug. Hi Kit it's me but if you don't let go I might die again, Kayubi gasped out as she transformed into her human form the only difference being that she had one tail that was blood red with a white tip instead of nine and cute fox ears with blood red hair that went down to her butt. I don't ever want to let you go again, Naruto whispered into her ear. As long as you don't crush me, Kayubi whispered back as she snuggled into him. How are you alive Kyuheim I held you as you died? Naruto asked the sadness and pain evident in his voice. Turns out Kami thinks everyone deserves second chances, even me she took away my tails though but I got these cute fox ears now, Kayubi explained as she nibbled his ear. I was so scared when you died I was lost without you, Naruto said as he began to sob. SSHSSSHH it's okay Naru kun I'm here now, Kayubi said in a comforting tone as she kissed away his tears. He replied by capturing her lips with his and showing her all his pain and sadness at her death along with the love that he had for her which she returned with the same amount of ferocity. I need you Naru kun, Kayubi whispered to him as she grabbed his hand and kneaded her breast with it. Kami had to send you back naked huh? Naruto asked with amusement. No she sent you with too many clothes now quit complaining I know how much you're enjoying this Kayubi replied as she slipped him out of his shirt and pants to be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.